Once upon a time, there was a girl who grew up on welfare, at times in a single parent home. And while her mother worked hard to protect her daughters from the details of their poverty, the worry hung thick in their home. This girl attended the Boys and Girls Club after school to both pass the time and help her family. You see, the club often had groceries that children could take home to their families, and it was not unusual to see this young girl loaded with bags of bread or gallons of milk walking her little sister home. One particular day, there was a contest. The winner of the persuasive essay contest would win tickets to the circus. One by one, kids rose and turned in their essays while this young girl furiously wrote. Last to stand, she turned in her paper and walked home, loaded with loaves of bread. On her next visit to the club, she learned that she had won. She treated her whole family to the circus by using her pen. This was a powerful and pivotal moment, and it lit a fire in her soul. And that's where it stayed, dimming to a flicker because no one told her that she could live her whole life from that fire, from that pen. She didn't know, so she grew up and became a therapist. A good thing, but not her truest thing. Until one day, as a grown woman, Someone did tell her what was possible. So she picked up that pen, lit it in the fire of her soul, and began writing. She wrote for children, and she wrote for adults, and she saw the impact of story on the brain and on behavior. And not just for the reader, but for the storyteller, too. So she began to coach other storytellers, sharing their messages. And she saw that one story changes generations of lives. The thing is, children like this young girl live in a scary world. They're born dependent on the world around them. They're entirely helpless to meet their own needs and to keep themselves safe. And as they grow, they learn that adults pursue their dreams and kids do what they're told. And those children grow into adults full of doubt and insecurity and frustration. And sometimes those adults make this world even more scary. So today's children experience violence, abuse, neglect, disasters, disease, and loss. And these same children will grow into tomorrow's adults expected to be functional and capable of leading nations, communities, and their own families. Yet these children now adults struggle to connect with other humans, to experience empathy, to develop emotional intelligence, or even to utilize parts of their brain like the prefrontal cortex, which gives them access to cause and effect, goal setting, impulse control, and delayed gratification. We see evidence of this all around our world. Yet, what if we could create safe spaces for children to see their own possibility and capability now? What if these spaces gave them permission to struggle with life's obstacles and embrace their strengths, Developing in the muscles born of adversity and belief born of overcoming. You see, I believe the power of stories for children, about children, have the ability to change the world. Well, you probably guessed it, but that little girl I told you about, that was me. My words won those circus tickets for my family. Yet the confidence of that win was quickly swept away by the messages of the world around me. Get better grades, be prettier, stop talking, do more, be more. Yet what I needed, what our children need, are voices speaking hope and belief into all of their possibility. And we can do that with story. Okay, let's talk about the brain. Have you ever wondered why you can sit through a whole PowerPoint presentation or read a chapter of a textbook and remember nothing? Well, that's because your brain is busy decoding language and that's about it. But with story, your whole brain lights up. It activates as if you're actually living the story, and it loves that. In fact, it rewards you with dopamine to get you to follow your curiosity because you might learn something useful for survival. So when you tell a child a story, they get the impact of your lesson without actually having to live through what you're sharing. They gain life experience safely. At the same time, story touches our inner brain, our emotional brain, furthering the impact. You know, when story touches our inner brain, healing happens. Think about a story that has stuck with you. Bring it to mind right now. For me, that's, stand back, said the elephant, I'm going to sneeze. It's the story of an elephant who feels an oncoming sneeze, but the last time he sneezed, the crocodile's snout folded inside out, the bees lost their stings and their wings, and the bear lost all of his hair. This was the story of a lovable main character who was also a burden on his animal community. And boy, did I feel his predicament. My greatest fear was being a burden. 
Well, his sneeze turns into a laugh and all of the catastrophes happen anyway. And I got to experience being a burden and being safe and loved at the same time. Now, think about the story that you brought to mind. Why did that story stick with you? I bet it made you feel something. So how do we steward good story for the development of our children? We know that kids live in a scary world and they're young. They haven't developed healthy coping skills or deep resiliency because they haven't had life experience yet. So when major life obstacles come their way, they grasp at any survival skill they can find. And while it might keep them alive as a child, they'll grow up with a limp. One day, my daughter came to me complaining of pain in her knee. At his office, the doctor asked, has she ever had an ankle injury? And she had. She'd sprained her ankle a few years before. And the doctor said, yeah, well, when she had the twist, she compensated to protect the injury. She needed to. Thing is, the ankle's healed now, but she's still compensating for it. And now her knee and her hip are out of whack. And then he fixed it. But it struck me, this is what happens to our kids emotionally. They compensate for the injuries of the world, and it's exactly what they need at the time. But the threats pass, they grow up, and they live their lives with a limp. But we can change that through story. We can, like the chiropractor, become healing agents. We can speak truth to minds and souls. You are enough. You have what it takes so that they can walk limp free again. We steward story collectively or individually, orally or in writing or in drama. We tell stories of children making their own decision, experiencing failures and successes, overcoming obstacles, making mistakes, and then learning from those mistakes. We don't lecture, we don't teach, we don't preach. We simply show a world where children are capable of choosing peace in adversity, of hope in poverty, or forgiveness in conflict. We tell stories where kids of every color, ethnicity, language, gender, and culture feel all of the feelings, and it's okay. Where there are safe places to ask hard questions. We tell stories with kids who have disabilities and unique abilities doing amazing things and doing hard things, impossible things, even failing at things, and it's okay. We need more opportunities for kids to identify themselves, their classmates, their friends, their fellow humans as acceptable, as belonging to our human family, as essential and worthy of love and acceptance. Let me share an example with you. One of my books is about a foster child going through the process of removal from her home to adoption. I received an email from the mother after reading it to her foster daughter. She said, I pulled Speranza's sweater off the shelf and I read it to my soon-to-be-adopted daughter for the first time. We read it over and over and over again. She carefully explored every page, asking lots of questions and excitedly exclaiming, that's just like me. It opened up amazing dialogue about leaving her bio parents, about being separated from her brother and about her love for me, but her desire to go home. We needed this moment. And to have this dialogue, it was beautiful and effortless and 100% because she saw herself in Speranza's story. Man, if every kid could see their own possibility in a book or on a stage, imagine the world, how they'd grow into leaders with empathy for the stranger, compassion for the foreigner, wisdom for their nation, and confidence to do what's right in the face of criticism. But guess what? Our stories change us too. I didn't realize that when I began writing. I thought I was just trying to reach into the depths of a child and say, I see you and you are enough. But I didn't realize how my stories were really questions I was still asking myself. Am I seen? Am I enough? This became very clear with my book, Weirdo and Willie. It's loosely based on a childhood story of my own when in fourth grade, the entire class began to chant at me. I was shy and self-conscious and so this was devastating. So I grew up, wrote a book, and tried to rewrite my experience. That book is Weirdo and Willie, and it's a story about a boy who's bullied. Every day the kids say, Willie is a weirdo. But then one day, a weirdo shows up, and he wants to play. And he's terrifying. By the end of the book, Willie and Weirdo realize their own ability for friendship. But after the book was published, a review posted expressing some disappointment. The bullies didn't transform. There was no aha for them. 
And my first thought was, oh my goodness, she's right. I know better than that. What was I thinking? But then it struck me. I had worked on that book for years. In fact, in the first draft, the creature weirdo shows up, eats all of the name callers, and everyone lives peacefully ever after. And I get my revenge. But as each draft progressed, the consequences of the bullies mattered less and the confidence of Willie mattered more. You'll have to read it to know how it ends, but ultimately, it's a story of learning to love your own uniqueness and find friendship in the places that matter, releasing the negative voices from any power over your worth. So here's the thing. When we are storytellers for children, we're also healing ourselves. The you that is still asking important questions. Do you see me? Do I matter? Am I enough? When you bravely step into the power of storytelling for the safety and wholeness of our children, you change too. You give and repair dignity. Not only are we developing a tomorrow full of empowered, equipped, whole people, but we are becoming them too. No one told me when I was a little girl that my pen could keep on impacting lives, that I could keep handing out circus tickets to all of the brokenhearted and the empty. But together now, you and I can champion the strength within each child. No more little girls or little boys need to miss their moments with a fire tucked inside of them slowly to die with time and contradiction. No, no, we can be their permission to bloom. You know, not every child has access to stories they can resonate with. Not every child has access to story at all. So this is my challenge. If you are a teacher, speak story. If you are a parent, read stories. If you're a writer, publish stories. An actor, perform story. Sponsor and plant libraries and theaters and developing communities. We each have a role to play. Yeah, the world around us might be scary sometimes, but we have a weapon. We have pens and hope and words to bring the potential of our children into ability for them today. Build belief into kids. Reveal what's possible. Reach a kid through story and you will change the world.